Well, hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. I hope you've been well. I have not been, and that's why I haven't been uploading videos for several weeks now. Something absolutely monumentally terrible happened in my life, and I won't bore new audience members with that who are just innocently clicking on this video to watch some awesome metal detecting, but I do want to tell my regular viewers exactly what transpired, so I'm going to save that for the end of the video for you guys. For everyone else who just wants to see a day of metal detecting in the woods, this is going to be your jam. My friend Matt and I, back in March, because I have quite a backlog from being gone for so long, hiked out to some early settler sites in the middle of the woods. My favorite. We both made some outstanding finds, but I think I may have won the day with something that I did not expect to find. It's something we all dream about finding, and it is an outstanding day when you can dig one of these. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's hop in. So I'm out here with Matt today. Say hello. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> and he just got a killer button. I haven't even seen it, but I've seen, well, I was totally out of the frame there. Wow. Look at the ribbon. It's got like four layers on it on the outside. It's pretty neat. Yeah, it is beautiful. It's an etched tomback. That's going to be probably, let's see. I think that's going to be a spun back. So yeah, I'd say around yeah, right yeah, the yeah, be careful though. Yeah. For whatever reason, I find that the etched tombacks are just so brittle. Yeah, it's spun. Like it's a something... beautiful spun. Look yeah. at that. There you go. Oh, still out of the frame. There we go. Yeah. yeah there you go. Actually, no. That's a uh, that has that later post on it. Oh, does it? So yeah. So that's going to be late 1700s, but oh, so pretty out of the woods. I haven't gotten that lucky lately. I had to really scrub the bejesus out of the last yeah, one that I yeah. found. Yeah. This, yeah, this site's had a couple of these, so that's, oh, that's I'm, I'm excited to find them. Probably another one today will come out. Yeah, and you, I want to see your axe head, too. Oh, yeah, that's or actually axe really cool. head, a little hatchet yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, really cool. This is really neat. It is really neat. Let's see if I can get it without stabbing myself. I had my head in a hole when he brought this over <laughs> to me, but, uh, yeah, look at that. A tiny little hatchet. I would say 1700s all day. So I told him, um, because is this the area where you found what's either a luck and booth or the owl brooch? Uh, no, it's not far from here though. It's probably just okay. a handful of miles as the crow flies. Because he, not... he made a really cool find recently. It was a silver brooch that is often mistaken as a luck and booth, but mm. I think it was a possible owl trade brooch. So that'd be very interesting if that has a stamp, like mm. a maker's mark yeah. on the left side of the blade, which you're looking for. So once you clean this up, right. Yeah, you want to look at this side yeah. and see if it has a mark give on it. Some because if it does, yeah. If it does, that way you can at least kind of narrow it down to if it, you know, was a fur trader that made it or whatever, you know. But oh, that'd be uh, so sweet. Yeah, yeah is, that is a cool. It's definitely the smallest one and the most or ornate oh, yeah. looking one that I've yeah, found. That's the smallest one I've probably seen. Yeah, yeah. Insert whatever joke you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get back with you. <laughs> He's freaking out about something. I feel like I should be excited, but I'm not positive I should be excited, but I'm excited. Okay. I don't know what this is, but it's really, really old and the holes got me wilding. What the hell? How did those holes get punched like that in the pewter? Maybe they were making buttons out of right. them. Well, no, because they'd usually use a mold for that, you know, where they would gang cast them together because there'd usually be several different chambers. That's weird. Wild, right? That's where that melted pewter was that you just showed me. Hmm. Yeah, so... I don't know. Man, the I thought you had a reality. Right oh, wait, look, 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 look. Look at these ribs here. Is this part of, like, a golf club? Wouldn't that be hilarious? Oh, my God. No Is way. Is that a golf club? No, I don't think Is so. Is that a golf club? From 1600s. <laughs> <laughs> No, really, what is that? I don't know. The holes are peculiar. How, how they got them cut out like that blows my but, mind. But, like, what are the ribs for? Huh? I don't know. There's a rib design. And, um, is it this side? Hang on. Yeah, it is. Look through my viewfinder. You can see it really clearly. See? Oh, yeah. What the hell? I don't know. The other side? It's weird. No. Those holes are very strange, though. It's like, yeah. It's like a cuff button size and, like, a regular button Four. size. Four! <laughs> So they hit acorn stuff. <laughs> I have no idea. What in the world? Uh, chestnuts. Yeah, it's, it's old. It's wild. Those holes are pretty. Look how they're. Look how the holes are punched too. Look how they're con. Uh, how see how they're um, tapered. I just can't wait for somebody see to comment inside? that it's from like the 1950s. It's definitely not. 
<laughs> it's most certainly not. <laughs> no, it looks it's pretty older old. than your G Ma for sure. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, those holes are interesting how they carved them out. It's like just that. the <laughs> the lines are throwing me off. That's <laughs> all I can think about now. It's <laughs> a cool goofy. little golf club. <laughs> right. Oh, I told man. you this guy was wealthy. He's yeah. playing golf out here in his backyard <laughs> with a pewter golf club. <laughs> okay. Enough of that. Let me try to find something. Okay, so I didn't film this signal. It was coming up about a 20. Looked pretty good when I flipped the hole open and it was coming up a 10. Anyway, I am right behind the chimney stack to a very old home site. Tons of iron in here, but still managed to squeak out the first desirable for me today. We have a little button. Maybe I'll get lucky and there'll be something on it. I say that every time, don't I? You know it. Uh, don't see anything yet. I think, well, is there something on that? I don't know. If there is, I'll come back. But if not, we'll keep moving. It looks like we have, you know, that looks actually like a little tomback button, the way that the shank is attached to it. That's cool. All right. Well, 1700s relic right off the rip. We'll take it. Well, my theme appears to be continuing. Got like a 14, 15 signal. And right next to that little bug. Ah, come on, where are you? Tiniest little button, wow. That is one of the smallest buttons I've ever dug. Without question. It's got the full shank. I'm gonna brush that off and come back just because that's really funny how teeny tiny it is. That's so beautiful. I just called Matt over because I knew he would really geek out over yeah, this. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I knew it was something he would love because, guys, I just got a design on it. Look, there's still thread through the back, too. Yeah. It's tough to see. It is tough to see, but once I clean it up at home, yeah, I do have some see. confidence that we'll be able to see the Tudor rose in the center. This is cuff size. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. It's starting to come through. It's beautiful and the, old. Yeah, you can see the petals. And then again, there's still some cloth, some Beautiful little piece old. of thread through the back there. That was a, I think, 14, 15 signal. <laughs> yep. That's a shotgun, case, that's a, no, 22 casing mm. signal is what that mm. is all day. So dig it all when you're on a decent site, right? You got to yeah, do it. Definitely. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, beautiful. Beautiful yeah. button. Yeah, I love those ones. With the Me designs. too. Yeah, I, yeah, I know you gorgeous. like those. So that's why I called you over. Yeah, okay. that's sweet. No, I love that. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well... Behind the cellar now, Matt shouted over. Yeah, um, I got a 16. It was really solid and tight, sounded banging. And uh, I flipped the plug and wow. this rolled right out. What is that? And it is what appears to be a button, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Wow. I've never seen anything like it, to be honest with you. I wonder if there's a shank on the inside or if it, yeah, you know what? This looks like one, you know, I've seen these dug before. It's like a almost like don't, between a dome and a pyramid kind of. Yeah. Definitely 18th century. And there's going to be a shank inside of there with a really, really long post. Either that or it's broken off. I don't know. Let's take a look. Yeah. Let's poke a stick in there and take a look. Yeah. That's what I would do. Just be careful because I don't think oh those shanks God, are very gorgeous. substantial. It's kind of funny when you get down to smalls. That completely, a site because... it, it's it's completely to dust. Really, I is just it? it turned to powder as I was digging it out. <laughs> that's amazing. Is yeah, that silver plated? Uh, silver washed. Silver washed. Yeah, because we didn't have electro plating until the 1840s, right, right, right. and this is earlier than that substantially. It's beautiful. So. That design is cool. Yeah, gorgeous. that's really nice. Cool. Well, congrats. Oh, it I popped thought... out of the hole. I thought it was a ring at first. Yeah. And that was the dome of it, and I thought I saw something wrapping, and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but that's awesome. I love that's buttons. Still cool though. It's though. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I know you love buttons, so oh, that's why I came and showed you that Tudor rose cuff link because I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna flip out. Gorgeous. Oh, nice. it stays awesome. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, nothing too crazy, but about maybe six to eight inches down, I have a little odd piece of brass, and I do know what this is. This is part of an old carpenter's ruler, uh, probably 1700s, to be honest with you. Maybe early 18s, I don't know. But there would have been another half that would have attached to another ruler. I'll put a picture on the screen right now so you have some clue of what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, that's what it was for, carpentry. Very cool little piece. Well, I'm kind of striking out today overall, but Matt's got a... Uh, solid 16, yeah. down about four and a half inches. And uh, 
as your phone goes off. Yeah. Ugh. It's fatty. Yeah, yeah, it's a fatty. fatty. Yeah. Let's see. All right, we'll see what year this is. Yep. Looks to be in pretty good condition. Maybe 1860? I don't know. I can't really see. Mm -hmm. This will tell us if it's going to be a first no. year. Oh, you know what? It's a first year, Matt. It's 59. There's no shield at the top. 59? Yeah. It's the very first year? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, at least I think so. Yeah, there's no shield at the top. So yes, with fatty Indian well. heads, I'll walk away from him because he's on a call. Uh, fatty Indians, uh, or just the Indian head series, began in 1859. The very first year, 1859, which is this one, will not have a shield at the top of the reverse. Uh, this thicker variant of the Indian head scent continued on through uh, 1864. And then that's the year they transitioned to scents that were about half the thickness of this. This is about twice as thick as your everyday United States scent. So that's a really great coin. Wow, it's cleaning up nice just thumb punching it. Nice one. Let me see if I can actually see the date. I rub this a little bit more. I think it'll come through for sure. That's going to be a really nice coin. So awesome find. Yeah, look at that reverse. Uh, he's going to be happy with that. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, you're, you're off the phone now. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Check out the reverse. It's facing you. <laughs> it's going to be Oh, pretty... that's the first year for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And it's going to clean up nice. I think that front uh, will clean up very nice. I think it was face up in the ground, but it's awesome. I was actually, <laughs> I was at the cellar over there and I saw this uh, strange looking rock. I was going to work my way over here, but I looped around instead and wasted time over here. So sometimes you zig, sometimes you sometimes, sometimes you zag. Any more details on it before I turn no, the camera it's gonna, off? No, it's going to clean nice, though. We'll get back cool. to it for sure. Sweet. All right. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. All right. So I already filled in the hole. This was only coming up like a 10 or so. Uh, I think it's part of a shoe or a knee buckle. It's really tough to say because there's just not much of it. But the curvature is suggesting that, so I think that's what that is. And, uh, yeah, not a bad find. Not a super exciting day for me, but there is still time yet. We'll see what happens. All right, well, I'm on the lip of another cellar right now. It's right there. Got, like, a 25 signal. It was booming, but eight or nine inches deep. Pulled it out of the very bottom and just flipped it over here. I'm assuming it's gonna be a tom back button with numbers like that. Yeah, I can even feel that it's convex. Do we have a design? That'd be nice. We don't usually, I mean, oh no, it's a, it's a brass button. I stand corrected. Huh, wonder what, no, it's not. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm sorry. All over the place, all right. Yeah, it was starting to shine up on the back. Oh, wow, look at that. Would you look at that? <laughs> it's a nice one. You know what? I'm going to spray that off and come back. Okay. There it is. I didn't spray it off too much. I just, you know, wanted to see if there was a pattern on there. Doesn't look like it. It looks like those are just scratches over time. And the back cleaned up pretty easily. I, mean, I didn't really go at this with the brush too much, but a uh, very nice button. Bigger than a quarter, smaller than a half dollar. Probably a coat button, easily mid-1700s. Very nice. Okay, well, I was looping my way around the cellar. I found that tomback button down that way. Uh, around the cellar, I'm like, you know what? I don't feel like the headache today, so I was going to work the outskirts. Got a very similar signal to that tomback button, really booming signal in the 20s. And I have no idea what I've got down there. Not, not a clue. Huh. Oh. What? Oh. Oh, this is something very interesting. I don't know what it is. But it's got some kind of design on it. It's got a hole in the middle. Uh, I'm going to get mad over here. This this could be something exciting. 
Okay, so Matt took a look at this. I can't even remember if I just filmed that or not. And was like, what is it? What is it? I think this could be some kind of trade item. I was thinking maybe, you know, because it's broken right here at the top. Um, that looks an awful lot like a kettle point. A kettle point is a little brass arrowhead that the Native Americans made out of um, cooking implements like pots and kettles that the early settlers brought over in an effort to trade with the Native Americans for uh, beaver pelts, which they would then uh, ship back to Great Britain and get a premium for it. It's actually what started capitalism in the United States. Little known fact, unfortunately. Um, these lines are just throwing me off. I don't know if they're scoring marks or if this is actually just something that was meant to be decorative. The other side is plain. The hole is definitely punched through with a, probably a square nail. Certainly looks that way. Um, whatever it is, I'm pretty excited about it. I know that sounds kind of weird, but I'm going to keep circling this area and see if that part of it is anywhere to be found. I mean, that's not a fresh break, but I can't imagine it'd be too far off. So very curious on this piece, but you know, it's weird. It like mirrors the other side pretty well. And that side does not appear to be broken. So, um, hopefully I have an update on the screen by the time this video drops, but I'm really not sure. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a cool piece and possibly fur trade related. I don't know. Okay, back to the cellar that we started at today. Matt's been pulling out some targets, so came over here, got like a mid-twenties signal, and wouldn't you know it, more of the same that I've been digging all day. Little button. It's actually surprisingly one of the larger ones I've dug today. Oh! Oh, Matt, you're gonna like this one. Oh, boy. Come over here. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, that's, hey. yeah, that's a pretty way. You don't want you want to do it? Yeah, I've only got two hands, so. Oh my, you are beautiful. Yeah, that's a pretty one. Oh. That's a display. That's a display that's button. Gorgeous. We like it. Gorgeous. I'm having yeah. so much trouble staying in the frame today. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's a beautiful it's got one. Got a nice one with a pattern on it. Yeah, and no back mark, so I assume that's going to be 18th century. Very, very fancy. I really like that one. Oh, that's nice. That picked up my spirits some for sure. Awesome. We'll keep going. So that's how deep in the ground something was in my hand. I just called Matt over. He's going to show me something in a minute. But the most beautiful piece of a shoe buckle frame. That's early, too. Gorgeous. I really hope the rest is around here. I mean, that was like a 9 or a 10 signal on my machine, so. And you can see it looks almost like a tomback material. Mm. It's all shiny. It's pretty. It is very pretty. I really wish it were complete. I found a buckle very similar to this at that uh, virgin colonial site that I was hunting for several months, and I never did find the other half, so. Uh, I'm going to circle this area and see what comes up, but uh, what have you got? I'm unsure. I originally thought it was a piece of a buckle frame. It's got the dots in the middle of it, and you can see where it Yeah, that's a piece of it. That's yeah. the, where the pin terminal was. So yeah. it's a pretty large one. I'm not they, in weren't, they, right weren't now. they weren't trying very hard when they were making the design on that. Let me see. <laughs> they were just kind of like, let's send it. Put your hand underneath that, because, yeah, it helps me focus. Thank you. Yep. That's what that is for sure. Sweet. Nice. All right. Well, hopefully I found the rest of mine. Yeah, it's the prettiest one. Man, guys, I'm really sorry I didn't film this target. It's getting dark. My battery is almost completely dead. Matt left. I'm walking on the side of the path. Literally, I'm probably 100 feet or so from my Jeep. I really hope I didn't scratch it. There it is. We got a tiny little silver. Oh my lord. What are you gonna be? All right, let me get a little more secured here. What is this? What is this? What the? Oh, no. Oh, my God. Matt's going to be pissed. He's not going to be pissed. He'll be super happy for me. I know he will. We were just talking about cat busts today. Oh, my God. That's... Oh my god. 
Oh my god, at least I'm not the one that bent it. Thank god. He's not going to believe me at all. Oh my goodness. I mean, he is. But, oh, 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 oh. I was so due for something great today. All right, let me get my water. We're going to do this together. And then I, uh, I think I might turn my machine off because what the heck, you know? How am I going to top this? Oh, come on. He's going to freak out. You know, like I said, guys, it's becoming a joke, really, that, you know, I can't find coins with other people. I don't understand it. Let's see. The front looks pretty slick. Come on, sweetie. Where are you, my beautiful lady? All right. I can't quite get a read on it yet for the front. That reverse, though. Oh, my Lord. I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> Cap punched half time. Oh, holy crap. Okay, I'm gonna finish like cleaning this off and then uh I'll be back with you. Is that a half yeah it is okay. I think. Alright, now I'm starting to uh, alright. I am all messed up. Uh, it's not every day we dig tiny pieces of silver and that's a really good one. Let me come right back with it. Okay, well there you have it. My beautiful, ugly little half dime. Uh, it would, I can't get it in this light right now, I'm sure, but have 5C to denote 5 cents underneath that big, beautiful eagle. And the front isn't much to look at, but we do have a date of 1835. That is my second capped bust half dime ever. They are really tough to find. I can't believe this just happened. I'm kind of just, like, dumbfounded right now. Is that... 35 hang on let me zoom in let me zoom in i'm sure you guys can see much better than i can yeah 35 wow i wonder what happened at the front to make it so incredibly worn i guess it was just in circulation for a long time i mean you can barely get a read on her but uh there's no denying that early american silver that's the stuff that we dream about and i can't believe i just found my second one matt is going to flip out that's an amazing note to end the day on. And, uh, wow. All right. Amazing. And there you have it. A capped bust half dime at the last second of the day. In fact, when I took those photos of the half dime on the end cap of the shaft of the machine, my machine died. That's how long I was out in the woods and how close I was to not even being able to find that target because my machine was almost dead. Just absolutely incredible feeling, especially when you've been grinding all day and just kind of finding smalls here and there. Huge thank you to Matt for inviting me out. Always a great time digging with him. And if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you don't miss an upload from me in the future. It really means so much to me when you subscribe because it helps this channel thrive, grow, and it continues to encourage me to make videos for you. Now, where the heck have I been for two months? <sighs> Like, if you know, you know, and you know that this is going to be really hard for me to get through. I'm going to try to boil it down to a couple of minutes. Go. Okay, June 6th, I get a phone call from my uncle informing me that my mother has two to three months to live because she has terminal brain cancer. And the larger of the two tumors is the size of a grapefruit. I was estranged from my mother for the last two years because of crazy behavior. And wouldn't you know it, there was an actual cause for that. Every time I tried to talk to her, it was a completely unproductive conversation. She would start shouting at me and then hang up for kind of no reason, at least no reason that I was privy to. So I could not have a relationship with her for the last two years, and that really sucked because we were very close for my whole life up until two years ago. Maybe closer to five years ago because she kind of started to get a little bit wacky. And given the size of the tumor, the larger one, um, the cancer's been there a while. It had metastasized from somewhere else. We all think it must be lung because she had severe COPD. But in any case, nine days notice. Your mom's gonna die in two to three months. That was June 6th. June 15th, I arrive in Florida and she's not able to communicate, but knows I'm there. And 10 hours after I arrive, she died and I was there. The next two weeks would be filled with me cleaning out um, 
her office and bedroom that were in my aunt's house. And uh, I finally drove home at the very end of June. I drove from Pensacola, Florida, all the way up to Connecticut with all my mom's stuff. And of course there was a funeral in the mix on June 24th that was held in New Orleans. Um, so that was a lot of driving back and forth from Pensacola. It's about a three and a half hour drive. Whatever, no matter. I got to see family members that I don't normally see, so that part was nice, I guess. I'm trying to look for silver linings here, guys, but it's pretty hard. And then, um, <clears throat> I knew I wasn't gonna make this, I, I knew I wasn't gonna make it through this very easily, but I'm doing better on this take than I did for the previous six, so we'll keep going with it, even though I'm starting to hyperventilate. Um, in any case, so I come home start unpacking her stuff. I still have a lot of stuff to unpack. And July was really just a month of dealing with frustrating financial institution after financial institution after financial institution. It's been a roller coaster and if you didn't know, I am my mother's only child. So I have to do it all. Everything is on me. Suffice it to say, I have been absolutely exhausted and flat out with end affairs for my mom. Considering I had pretty much no notice and um, I have to do it all myself, it's a lot. I appreciate your patience and hanging around and waiting for the next video to drop, wondering when it was gonna happen, when I really couldn't make you a promise of when that was going to happen. But I am back and I'm staying back because frankly, making these videos will probably help keep me sane. I had to come back and I had to address you and tell you face to face what's going on in case you did miss that post in the community section of YouTube, which evidently 90% of people did. So that's what happened. That's what I'm going through. Um, I do have a lot of awesome footage in the pipeline. I know I say that a lot, but really like I found another virgin seller and that gave me, I think, three videos. It's gonna be awesome. Keep your eyes peeled for that, as well as other metal detecting adventures. So again, I really hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next week. Blue.